so like we have a connection with a couple of movies that were shot locally yeah. in, in where we went to school. And one of them was one that involved Mickey Rourke. And oh, one of the writers in his contract, time, yeah. one of the writers in his contract, because I had talked to, uh, he blurred this out, talked to about it. Yeah. And he said that one of the uh, writers in his contract was he had to be, he had to have his dogs on set with him the whole time. Now, fortunately, his dogs don't make a whole lot of noise, but he has to have them in view the entire time while he's acting. There was a scene that took place in a building where they couldn't have the dogs in there because there was like super sensitive sound and they couldn't hear the, they didn't want to hear the claws. So they had to get a wrangler, hold the dogs up by the window so he could see his dogs for the scene. That is unhinged. <laughs> so that, how does he act if he's just constantly like doing lines and then looking like, are my poochies okay? Yes. Are my poochies okay? <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the 176th episode of Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad Show. Watch every movie said you should see. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Shilogo, joined as always by the other host of this illustrious show, Mr. Kyle Hinton. What are you doing? It's Gary Daniels time! <laughs> Startled me. I wasn't expecting all that energy right out the gate. <laughs> this movie was fun and I loved it. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Uh, so today we're talking about a 2015 film. How did you find you found this director? Yes. And then was it this movie? It was that you found? it was through this film that I found because I was like, what's a weird collection of uh, a bunch of actors and stuff? It's like, oh, it's a Gary Daniels film. It's also got Eric Roberts. Yeah. And Mickey Rourke. And Michael Madsen. Michael Madsen. <laughs> Daryl Hannah. It's, and it's Jeff wild. Fain, it's, why, yeah. It's, yeah, Jeff Fay. It, it, it's a weird collection of a bunch of people who have been in movies we've done. Yes. <laughs> Like little bit parts in movies. Exactly. We've done. But like usually they're all either like the main antagonist or the main protagonist. Yeah. Never are you do you have so many of them collectively in and one just spot. Like weird supporting characters. Yeah, it is very interesting. And we'll get into it. Uh and I I'm not afraid to admit that I don't exactly am not sure what happened in this movie. No. But that, that's not the point though. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So the film is a 2015 film uh, directed by Ara Paella, who, uh, which I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, uh, but I will, because Paella is like a, that's a word for food, isn't it? And it's spelled different. It's like a Spanish something. Anyways, I don't know, but it looks like it's Paella. But anyways, the film is Skin Traffic. I'm not going to be okay with anything. I can't ever be till I'm standing over that motherfucker pissing in his goddamn eye sockets. Skin traffic. Which is an awful name. No, it, yeah, it is. Uh, he watched Taken and was just like, can we oh, Can we do that? You think Taken? Oh, what do you think? I thought, well, yeah, I can see the Taken inspiration, obviously, with the story. I thought this felt like they saw John Wick and were like. That too. Because John Wick came out the year before this oh, movie God. came out. And that to me yes. felt like what they were, especially the like choreography and stuff. They were trying. Oh yeah, to do, Liam Neeson's like, not going to be able to do no John Wick choreography. No, the what, Gary we, Daniels will though. <laughs> because yeah. the man is built like a. <laughs> Well, he's built, he's built like the like Mark. Gary he, Daniels. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the guy's yeah. like sixty and can still kick both of our asses handily. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I wonder that they'll be able to murder me until he dies. <laughs> The day before he dies, he can come beat me up if he wanted to. Uh, so just getting into it, the film uh, is produced by Raging Pictures, which is such a metal production company name. And when that logo came in, I was like, oh, I know we're in for something intense. Uh, and my favorite. So this movie, as you said, it's like somewhat competently directed and shot mm -hmm. somewhat. I don't So there, there's varying levels of 
quality, let's yes. just say. Yes. But for the stuff that's really good, I don't know who their DP is, but that person like knew what they were doing. Yeah. Well, the for stuff, the, yeah. For the, uh, for the really good stuff. Yeah, there's like, some stuff that's pretty good that mm-hmm. looks pretty good and was clearly shot with a different camera, yes. with different crew, and different and full like lights. And then there's other stuff that was clearly shot by like one person like with Unit a very B. cheap camera. <laughs> yes, and like yeah. no lights, no but, nothing. Like when they spent money on the production, they knew what they were doing. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't look too bad when they're when they have the the money for it. Uh, but the thing that, that that really blew my mind uh, leaning into this uh, is like r- right on the open it. I, it was so cliche and terrible right from moment one. The opening monologue that Gary Daniels oh, yeah. does is so bad. Some people might think that I don't have a conscience, that it's all about the money. Well, that's never been true. Because he just goes on and on about how all the terrible things he does and how it weighs on him. And I just love it's literally one cliche after the other for like three yeah, minutes. It's, it's a hitman with a morality trick. Yes. Yeah. The day it doesn't affect you is the day you lost your soul. And hell has a very hard floor. <laughs> and the day it doesn't is the day you lost your soul. You stepped off the ledge into the abyss. It's just, the universe doesn't make any exceptions. Make sure you're pushing in the right direction or the universe will push back. So there's got to be a reason. There's consequences. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. It's just, it's just a line after line of that for like three minutes, and it's amazing. It I reminds me it. of Steven Seagal doing his like Chinese proverbs and yeah. stuff. There's, there's an old Zen story of two monks that were walking across the bridge. And the junior monk said to his teacher, he said, what is the Buddha nature? And the other monk picked him up and threw him in the water. You know? Yeah, it's so overwrought. Some people, they just need killing. And then he walks into a church, Kyle. Like, can you, are you yep. kidding me? Yep. <laughs> I only know that some people, they just need killing. Are you kidding me with this? Am I watching Boondock Saints? What is happening? It's so bad. I love it so much. Um, but he goes into a church and he's getting a job and he, he, he picks up an envelope. Literally a dead drop. Yeah, he picks up an envelope that has money and like a name or address or whatever in it. Uh, and then then we cut to London, and this is where Mickey Rourke is. <laughs> We're introduced yes. to Mickey Rourke's well, character. Are we are we at the port of San Francisco? Or are they trying to pass this off as San Francisco right now? No, that's the beginning with Gary Daniels. Okay, I think is he's in San Francisco. Then we go gotcha. to London with Mickey Rourke, yeah. and I think that's where Gary Daniels goes. I think I could be wrong. There is San Francisco at there, one point. Yeah, there is confusion in this. Well, I mean, the, yeah. the plot doesn't really. It no. doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't care that it doesn't. No, follow it itself. doesn't. Ca- they literally. It is all just a vehicle for Gary Daniels to beat up and shoot a bunch of people. We do not mm-hmm. really care that much about what's going on. And when we do explain it, my brain literally just ch- turned off and was like, "Nope, I won't comprehend this. Yep. I'm sorry." So um, we're introduced to Mickey Rourke, though, who is one. Who's a? I don't even know what he does. Crime dude. He's a crime He's guy. A crime guy. <laughs> yeah. Steiner, this meeting is a courtesy. If he doesn't check out, I want you to kill this fucker slowly, painfully. He's crime guy Mickey Rourke, um, but he has a daughter that he loves mm. very much, which is, again, a very original idea that a crime boss has a child that he loves a lot. Dad? Hey. Come. Oh, you look great. Aw, thanks. You like yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, but we also find out that she's pregnant. Mm-hmm. She's pregnant. And also, there's a 0% chance that Mickey Rourke wasn't hitting on his daughter oh, yeah. in between takes. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in addition to that, the, my favorite thing, like, he keeps putting his like arm yep. around her and stuff. You smell so good. Yeah. Love the dress. Mm, well, you smell great. And... <laughs> I'm not sure if you noticed. So I'm not good. sure if you noticed the. I'm sure you did the white balance issue that they had between the two shots. I did. I wasn't. I maybe so, I missed. So like it. one of them is like doled out green, looks like it's under fluorescent lighting or yeah. something like that. And the other one is warmer, like tungsteny. Yeah. And clearly, whenever they did that shot, that is a shot where you cannot see Mickey Rourke's face. That was shot. Had to have been shot at a later date. 
as pickup shots, and that's just a stand-in. Oh, yeah. there's. I was pretty convinced that there's a shot here in a second that I was 100% fairly sure that is a a body double i could be wrong about that uh we'll get to it in just a second um but we're explaining and setting up all of our characters uh and also when we find out she's pregnant i was like well she's 100 percent dead. oh yeah she's dead yeah, she's easily. dying i know how these movies work so just to clarify gary daniels is bradley Mickey mm. Rourke is Vogel. I will never say their character names again, but that's just for you. Yep. Uh, I will call them Mickey Rourke and Gary Daniels from now on. We know uh, why they were hired. <laughs> but yeah, Gary Daniels is Bradley, Mickey Rourke is Vogel, and of course Zendaya is Michi. And so then... <laughs> Kyle doesn't get that one. No, I don't. What the fuck are you... Uh, is this a Dune reference? <laughs> that's a Vine reference. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, I'm sorry. I gotta put some eye drops in my eyes are watering. <laughs> Ugh. A vine, or like like the video, like the video service vine. Just Google Zendaya's Michi and watch it while I'm going on your phone, <laughs> on YouTube. Just watch it, Kyle. What the f <laughs> small foot? And Zendaya is Michi. Okay, it's that Bigfoot animated movie. So, Smallfoot, got it. Oh, but you didn't, it's so good! Oh, no, I didn't bother playing it. What?! <laughs> How dare I, right? Kyle! So good! Uh, you don't understand culture. <laughs> Uncultured swine. <laughs> Zendaya's Michi is one of the greatest videos produced in, a, in the last hundred years. <laughs> and Zendaya is Michi! Then we kind of cut forward, uh, uh, not cut forward, but we jump. G Gary Daniels is arriving uh, in to uh, Mickey Rourke's like yeah. layer. And by the way, he's contracted to kill and, ob and obtain a, an item a from Mickey Rourke. Yeah, yeah. So you know, Bradley uh, Gary Daniels this is a hitman. Yes. And yet, you, you don't normally go up to your target and be like, "Hey, buddy." Let's chat. I'm gonna kill you in a minute, but first let's talk. Let me just get straight to the fucking point. Why the fuck are you here? You know why I'm here. The disc. Yeah, so he talks to him and he basically explains that he needs the disc from him. Uh, and then all of Mickey Rourke's men try to attack Gary Daniels and he just and murders just them murders all. murders the shit out of them. And then he threatens to kill Mickey Rourke's daughter. He's like, I'll kill your daughter if you don't give me the disc. I'm not gonna kill just you. But then, so Mickey Rourke goes and he's like, gets him the disc. And this is the shot I was talking about. They walk into the other room to get the disc. Also, it's like a hilariously shitty floor safe. Yes, it's a little tiny, like, like, uh, yeah, like motel floor safe. But when he's walking, anytime we see him from the back, I'm 100% sure it's a body double oh, yeah. in a terrible wig. Oh my god, dude, the wig. And I'm not even convinced that what Mickey Rourke has oh, on his it's head. Oh, it's probably it's hair plugs, yeah. It looks like a wig to me, but yeah. It's so funny. And I was like, okay, so clearly this part where they walked to the safe was filmed at a completely different time. Mm -hmm. um, basically, and then so they get back. He has the disc now, and then Mickey Rourke's like, so I guess you're going to kill me. And then it just cuts. And the scene ends, and then it says six months later. And I was like, okay, okay. I, guess, I guess we'll find out what happened there eventually. What am I going to say? I presume you're going to just kill me. Uh, now now we're back. Now we're still in London, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Gary Daniels is, we don't know what his deal is, but he's just kind of walking around. He goes to a Chinese restaurant. I'll just take the... Uh... Roast pork and beans sprouts, please. Where two guys come in and steal some fortune cookies or, or something. something. <laughs> like a box of cookies off the counter. I give fortune. I, it, he, they pull a box of something off the counter and yeah. take it. Uh, and then 
as he's walking, he leaves with his food, and as he's walking down the street, these two, like, pimps are, like, uh, accosting some prostitutes. Yeah, and this, this is where the Taken thing comes in, because yes. it's, like... The whole it, movie is about sex trafficking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just like in Taken, it's like, oh, it's a bunch of Eastern European yeah. sex traffickers. Yes. Cool. So what is this? That's all there is. Oh, it's cold. It's laziness. Yeah. Uh, and then they get in, they, they just keep pushing Gary Daniels around. Uh, yeah. Over they, and over. they beat him up and take his lunch money. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, like, they're on the, they're like, hey, give us your lunch. And they're like, we don't want Chinese food. Give us your money. <laughs> you know what that was like. No? Burger with fries. You don't have anything like that, do you? Silly. So I love ridiculous. it so much. And it, like, I understand, like, you're supposed to be like, look, he's a broken man. Yeah. It's Gary fucking Daniels, okay? <laughs> he, he kills people in every movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he he goes and uh, so he gets his he gets his lunch money stolen, and then he goes inside and he's very sad. And we get a flashback to the events of what happened six months ago when he was doing the Mickey Rourke Yeah, job. which I guess more bodyguards came more in. More bodyguards showed up, and he had to murder everybody. Mm. And then as he was leaving, a guy oh. got off an <laughs> elevator, and as he shot the guy on the elevator, the daughter was behind the guy on the mm -hmm. elevator who, like, fell out of the way, and he shot her, like, right in the, yeah. in the stomach and <laughs> killed her. So we assume she died. We don't actually mm. see what happens. It just kind of cuts. But yeah, he we, he shot her uh, and she died. And then we will not see Mickey Rourke until the end of the movie <laughs> again. We will move on from there. Uh, but he, so he decides now he's got to do something. So he goes into this bar where I guess these like this this uh, these criminals hang out or whatever. He's in this bar and these people start shit with them. And this bar is so funny. He's just beating the shit out of everybody. <laughs> But the sound effects are also or, yeah, weak and terrible yeah. and echoey, and it just sounds bad. They didn't have a good fully person. No, whoever did the sound, it just doesn't hold up as some, as well as some of the other aspects. Because again, and we'll talk about this throughout, the choreography and the fight, like uh, cinematography, is pretty good overall. Mm -hmm. Like the the fights feel intense and fast, and like you know, it feels like we're not just watching people go through choreographed, rehearsed, like shitty fights. It actually feels pretty intense and good, but the sound effects do not help sell it at all. <laughs> Uh, but he's on his mission to save all the prostitutes now, Kyle. Yes. And so he breaks into the like brothel where they're keeping these women, where they just have like blankets hanging. Yeah, it's just, like a blanket fort. Yes. <laughs> it's a giant blanket. He fort. just he just goes on a murder spree as he's like snapping necks and shooting people. Yeah, snapping necks, shooting people, uh, and then eventually he finds this woman whose name is Anna. Wait. As an ambulance on the way, she'll be fine. I can't be here. I cannot be here when the police come. Then go. Arana. Mm. And he takes her out of there. He kills everybody else, including, like, the main guy who's running this this particular brothel. Um, and, and he gets her, and they, they get out, and they're driving down the street. I love this so much because it's such a weird line. And he needs to make a phone call because they need a safe house to go to. <laughs> yes. And he, he's like, I need to pull over. And he pulls over. He's like, I need to make a call. So he pulls over and parks and pulls out his phone, and she says to him, I need to make a phone call, unless you want to sleep in the car tonight. Oh. So you pull over because you don't want to break the law by calling while driving. And then the scene just ends, and mm -hmm. it's the weirdest. It's delivered weird. I don't know if it's supposed to be a joke or what it's supposed I, I think it's because we need to film in a car, and we can't be bothered to ADR, so we can't have it move. Thank you for what you did. I know every girl in Emily traumatized for the rest of her life. 
maybe that's what it is. Yeah, I I was I could not. It's just this weird line that felt like it was covering for something mm. that happened. But I was like, also what? also the whole more hilarious. Uh, Dominique Swaim, uh, she is American and putting on. A oh, very is she heavy really? European yeah, accent. I can't tell that all those all if that accent sounds as real <laughs> yeah. to me as any. I don't. I cannot. I, I'm terrible with accents. Thank you. Those bastards deserve it. But he calls Eric Roberts. Which is where Eric yes. Roberts is introduced, uh, another uh, good, bad, or bad, bad alum, um, who is uh, he's like he ran, he's the head of the agency that used to employ. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, Gary Daniels. What is it? The ICA in the Hitman universe. The yeah, yeah. It, or I was gonna say like are. in the John Wick universe, the fucking like there's the whatever the, what, Ian Ian McShane. Yeah, character? like whatever yeah. that I can't remember what they're called because I've only seen the first John Wick movie, but. That group that he's a part of. It seems like that's what Eric Roberts is like, the head of that. And he calls Eric Roberts and is like, I need a safe house. And Eric Roberts is like, all right, we got one here. Go to this address. And he goes there. And then Eric Roberts says to somebody else, like, hey, we got to send him a welcoming party or whatever. Bradley's active again. Location five. I'll rent your wake up call. Because they, they, they apparently have it in for him because he stopped working. Yeah, he, for them. he was inactive, which yeah. normally be, means you, if you're, if you're not working for us, yeah. you're a liability you're working against, against us. us. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's the kind of thing. Um, uh, so then we find out as they get to this safe house, uh, we, we get a little bit more backstory where he's talking to Anna. And another problem I have with this movie, which is a classic good, bad, or bad, bad movie thing. Which is that every fucking scene, regardless of what's happening, has loud as shit music that yep. does not fit the context yep. of the scene yep. at all. It's just we're having this like very like emotional, dramatic heart to heart where Anna is talking about how her and her younger sister got like kidnapped and sold into sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. And the whole time there's just music blaring over the whole scene. Josie and I were very close. I was supposed to take it out of her. Ah, so bad. But she's like, I have a younger sister. I don't know where she is. And Gary Daniels is like, all right, I'll help you find your sister, which I don't even remember her sister's name. Mm -hmm. um, but she has a younger sister. Or she has a picture of it. And he's like, all right, I'll help you find and save your younger sister or whatever. Then as they're sitting there, this is where the hitman yeah. team shows so, up that Eric Roberts sent. Exactly. This is yeah. where the ICA agents come <laughs> yeah. in. Yeah. They come bursting in. And I love <laughs> one of the guys is just walking down the hallway. And Gary Daniels heard them coming, obviously. Mm. He's just walking down the hallway and he just walks past Gary Daniels' gun and Gary Daniels just shoots him in the head. <laughs> and it's like, these guys are terrible at their job. Yep, they're the and, B team. Yeah, and then he shoots another guy and as he falls down, there's this really great, terribly motion tracked to CG oh, blood yeah, hole, the like bullet hole. So like every time chest. somebody gets, because we're in England and guns are not readily available. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, all plastic every, every, guns. Every single one of those is plastic. Yeah. It's, it gets Very really, noticeable. it gets really funny when we get to like Eric Roberts' gun, yes. and it's a desert eagle that looks like it's made out of plastic. It's, it's the world's most obvious, yeah, uh, BB gun. Like it, it does, it does actually have action to it, but I think it's like mm. a BB gun or an airsoft gun but or like, something that has like every a, blood splatter is oh, the worst CG. It's, it's CG, and in particular, this one in this in this scene where the guy falls and he has like a bullet hole in him, it's tracked, and it reminded me so much of my terrible movie. <laughs> short film that I made in college. It's like, it looks as good as mine did, which is to say, fucking terrible. <laughs> on a laptop in like an afternoon. <laughs> this is an actual movie with like actual people in it and it looks just as bad. Well, you uh. know, it's it's a relatively, relatively for that pro thing, it's the same. Cause all I did was yes. go to a college and was like, yeah. hey, you know how to use After Effects, You know how to use right? After Effects, right? Can you motion track this bullet hole in this guy's chest? Sure, yeah, I yeah, can try. Sure. <laughs> I can do my best. Uh, but this is where it became clear in this scene to me that they were going for like a John Wick thing because he does a lot of the like John Wick style stuff where he like the steals gun, guns gun and gun kata, <laughs> gun kung fu stuff where he like sh he like flips the guy around and then like shoots him in the head while he's on the ground like lots of that kind of like mm -hmm. John Wick style stuff. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's what they're doing. I get it. That makes sense. But again, it looks okay. It's not anywhere near to the level of something like John Wick's movie. The John no. Wick movies are, and but the, it looks the, okay. In in this in this apartment, this is the 
lower quality one. Yeah. When we get to the end, where it's just 10 straight minutes of chaos, yeah. some of that stuff is great. There are some just incredible moments in that final fight scene, uh, on top, layered on top of some absolute nonsense <laughs> that they had to do production wise yes. that we will get to. <laughs> Uh, so then also after he he's able to dispatch all these guys, then we cut to Daryl Hannah and Michael Madsen. Daryl Hannah's in this. I mean, yes. All right. She's working with Michael Madsen. Do you and think they, her and Michael Madsen had like the same agent and they were like, look, look or you friends. can get Michael Madsen, but you got to get Daryl Hannah with <laughs> Yeah, her. I don't know. Uh, but they're working together and I guess they're just part of this. Yeah. Like they, I guess trafficking they, they like and, oversee all the schools is what they call them. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. Uh, and and they're just hanging out in this bar. We also get this. This is four straight minutes of character introduction that accomplishes nothing. My grandfather fought at arm. American Airborne fought against the SS division. Called themselves the Crazy Hats. Literally irrelevant. We just have Michael Madsen talking about how his grandpa oh. was in World War II, and I'm like, yeah. what is what? Other, I mean, again, I get the other great to... thing is uh, Michael Madsen's hair is so pitch black dyed. Yes. it reminds me of a uh, Creed from The Office. Where he puts <laughs> yeah, the where toner he puts in the, the toner in his hair. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll get. <laughs> he has my favorite piece of wardrobe in maybe any movie we've done ever. Not in this scene, but in a scene coming mm. up a little bit later when he when it cut to that scene with him, I lost <laughs> my shit laughing at, at like whose idea was it we'll get to it also i love the way this scene ends is that they're talking and michael madsen just goes in like the middle of their conversation he just goes look i gotta get out of here and turns and walks away what can i have at my daybreak it's like i gotta get out of here okay and then it just it cuts, cuts and we're it's done it. and it. i'm like wait I feel like that was actually Michael Madsen just being like, look, I got to get out of here and just left it. Right, like, oh, fuck. Right. <laughs> now we've introduced all like the really weird actors and stuff. Yeah. That's a uh, minus like Jeff Fahey. Cause yeah, he he's, he's in, yeah. But so we have Mickey Rourke, Eric Roberts, Michael Madsen. Yeah. The booze, like in their writer contracts, the booze budget for those three alone. This is a very probably half the movie. A very flammable set, Kyle. <laughs> this is a very flammable set. We'll just say that much. <laughs> this set, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's no way Michael. Ma I mean, Michael Madsen. Literally, all of his scenes take place in, in a bar. bar yes. <laughs> like absolutely, it's incredible. Uh, it's like I got here. Okay. Uh, but then we cut. Um, to a, uh, oh, wait, I'm curious. I, I'm not, no, I don't know, break this up again. No, so, like, uh, I know, so like, we have a connection with a couple of movies that were shot locally, yeah, and where we went to school. And one of them was one that involved Mickey Rourke. Oh. And one of the writers in his contract, time, yeah. one of the writers in his contract, because I had talked to, uh, you blurb this out, talked to about it, yeah. And he said that one of the uh, writers in his contract was he had to be he had to have his dogs on set with him the whole time. Now, fortunately, his dogs don't make a whole lot of noise, but he has to have them in view the entire time while he's acting. There was a scene that took place in a building where they couldn't have the dogs in there because there was like super sensitive sound and they couldn't hear the they didn't want to hear the claws. So they had to get a wrangler hold the dogs up by the window so he could see his dogs for the scene. That is unhinged. <laughs> so that, how does he act if he's just constantly like doing lines and then looking like, are my poochies okay? Yeah. Are my poochies okay? I mean, man loves his dogs. Can't fault him for that, but Ugh. well, that's insane. God, I'd well, like to thank all my dogs. Uh, but then we have a, like a very exciting car chase through a junkyard um, where they're in the car and they get, they, after they leave the safe house, they're getting chased around. Um, and then that scene also just ends, ends yeah. like every scene. It's just like, it's like we're in the middle of this car chase and then it's just like cut. We're in a cafe now with the same characters who were just in the car chase. It didn't seem like we really finished the car chase. It just, we're, oh, okay. I guess we're moving on. <laughs> And I love in this cafe, fucking uh, Anna is like, why are they chasing us? Who are those men? Why are they chasing us? Literally, the scene before this, she just said to him, This is not the end of it, you know? 
they won't let you just do that and walk away. And then the next scene, she's and like, because this was shot first. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. You're right. That's what it is. That's mm -hmm. 100% what it is. Why are they chasing us? I don't know, man. <laughs> you just said why they were chasing you. Like, in the last I did, scene. I didn't also enjoy a certain, like, Britishness to this scene where they have... Oh, so a, much of this So they, they, they have, like, a full English breakfast as their, like, yes. as their specialty. Yeah. And then uh, she, she orders that with a coffee because... She's, she's American. American. Yeah. The actress is American. Yeah. And then uh, and then <laughs> Gary Daniels is like, I'll take the same, but with tea. <laughs> the breakfast special, please, uh, with coffee. I'll make that too. I'll take tea. It's like, of course. Yeah. Of course you would. Yeah. Uh, I, I love, I talk about British. Uh, the next scene after this is he goes to meet Paul Hamilton, the talent Yes, God. <laughs> Morning. Is Paul Hamilton here? I'd like to have a word. <laughs> Who is the most British motherfucker? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. How are you today? Well, actually, it's been a full day already. Well, I know how that goes. So, what can I do for you? Uh, he, he's not the same actor, but he reminded me of the actor who played uh, Walter Frey in Game of Thrones. A, a little bit. He reminded me of every a, a, every character or every actor in that fucking terrible British mob movie we did. Uh, yes. the, I can't even remember the name of it. Uh, uh, Gat Ganwick Gangster. Yeah, Gatwick Gangster. Gatwick Gangster. That's Gangster. That's it. Yeah, he reminds me of like every <laughs> actor in that movie. But he goes to this talent agency to meet Paul Hamilton because he got a tip on that. Mm. Um and this guy is like a talent agent who who placed these models with these people, and so he thinks there's a connection. He will know like who is running these like uh, prostitution rings or whatever. Uh, and I love he goes in and he talks to like his, this guy's secretary, and she's like, "Oh, he's yeah, uh, sure, you can go in." And the office is right next to her. Her desk yeah. is right here. It is like right next. To not it. really. It's not so much an office as it's like a conference. It's room? Like a conference room. All windows. There are yeah. blinds, but they're all windows everywhere, all the way around it. Um, and so he goes in, and again, it's another scene where just every... They're having a serious conversation that should be tense and interesting, but the music is just blaring and overwhelming the entire conversation. <laughs> Rachel mentioned something about Anna. Yes, well, you used to be Anna's agent, and Jessica's too, I believe. So I was hoping you could tell me exactly where Jessica Peel is right now. And I also love when they, the conversation starts, he goes, I can call you Paul, right? And the Paul guy goes, yeah. And then there's just a pause. I think you're misunderstanding me, Paul. Can't call you Paul, right? Huh? For like 10 <laughs> seconds, and then the scene moves on, yeah. and it was like, what is happening this in the scene, edit? When, when he's trying to get information and he gets violent, uh, it, it becomes the most Get Carter scene in this whole film. I'm not sure if you've seen Get Carter. No. Michael Caine is from, from like the 70s ah. where he's trying to find out the people who uh, killed his brother. Yeah. Ironically enough, he also plays Michael Caine plays a hitman in that too. Oh. Is that a common thing? It has to be in England. Yeah. <laughs> what, hitman? Yeah, sure, why not? That's where the ICA is based, right? Sure. Anyways, uh, so it, 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 it's so Mike, it's so like uh, get Carter because he's like strangling him with a tie yeah, with his to tie, get information. With his own tie, yeah. And it reminded me of uh, where uh, in Get Carter is trying to get information, and he the guy is uh, begging for his life, saying he didn't do it, he didn't do it, and he Michael or Michael Kane just stabs him in the side, goes, "I know you didn't do it, I know you didn't do it," while he's like bleeding on the side of the street. It's great. I know you didn't kill him. I know! Watch Good Carter. It's a fantastic movie. Right, I'll check it out. My favorite detail in this scene is that this guy, Paul Hamilton, <laughs> you know he's British because he has a a photograph, a framed photograph of the queen, the queen yeah. from when she was like 30 <laughs> hanging on the wall behind him. Oh, God. It's so weird. And then my favorite thing, so he threatens him and he pulls out a gun. It is... So it does have a suppressor on it, but he mm. pulls out a gun and he shoots once in the wall. <laughs> like, oh, you don't think I'll I'll shoot you? Watch, but he shoots once in the wall, and then, like you said, he grabs him and he starts choking him with his own tie and chokes him to death. Yeah. And then walks out of the office. Yeah, and of course, I mean, this is once again movie magic. Uh, sure. 
Suppressors don't actually make a fucking bullet silent. No, there, he is in a busy office with like people everywhere and it's full room of windows and he just choked a guy to death and shot a gun and nobody has any idea yep. any of that happened. Uh, oh, and my, my favorite part is he's leaving and the secretary was like, oh, did you get all the information you need? Oh, yeah, he, uh, he, he remembered the, the two girls just fine. He actually got all choked got up all over choked it. choked up over it. God, <laughs> what a line. What a line. Were we able to help? Yeah, he remembered them well. Actually, he got quite choked up. Then he ends up calling and talking to Eric Roberts again, or Eric Roberts is calling somebody. I only mention it because Eric Roberts has, I realized at this point, the phone he is using is a portable phone from like the early 2000s. I was like, motherfucker, my grandma had yeah, that phone. Yeah, he's, he's, got, he's got that 2G coverage. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Uh, and also, this is where we, we first see the director. Mm. Is in the yes. movie. Yes. yes. Uh, um, he plays like the right hand man of Eric yes. Roberts. Who in the credits is just title or his X. character's name is X, but mm. he went over here in the movie. He just sits there and yeah, is like he's muscle. surprisingly tall. <laughs> yeah, and a pretty good fighter, we'll find out. A uh, pretty good martial artist at the end of the film. We're, we then set up the next kind of set piece, which is this big fancy party that is going on with a bunch of, you know, big wigs. And we go to this mm. house and there's security out front. And my favorite detail, I don't know if you noticed this, it's at 50 minutes in the movie, like exactly like 50 04. We see this shot of the front of this like fancy building house or whatever, and the security guard standing there. And as you notice, there's two cars parked on the street in front. Did you notice those cars are not there? Those are photographs of cars <laughs> edited. <laughs> Cause it's like a it's like a fucking Lamborghini. That's hilarious. Like a, it's, it's like very, look, it, it costs way too much to rent a Lamborghini yes. for this. <laughs> so they literally Photoshop these cars. It looks good enough and it's short enough that yeah. if you're not paying attention, you will not notice. But I paused. It was like the those are not rules there. <laughs> of faking CG are this: make it dark. Yeah, make it almost where it can't be seen. Yeah, and do it very quickly. Uh, and it, the main way I noticed is just like the shadows underneath the car, the way it hit the street looked very. I was like, okay, those are those are clipped out mm. and edited in there. That's very hilarious. funny. So he goes. Uh, also, he he runs somewhere. Gary Daniels runs somewhere, but then he comes back to their safe house, and Anna's been she, murdered. She's dead. Yeah, I don't know. We didn't see that happen. Wow, that was quick. Yeah, it was very quick. But she's dead. So he takes the photo of the younger sister, and he's like, I'll, I'll don't worry. So I'm supposed to be, like, the main actress in this film, but you guys only had me booked for, like, two days of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, because she just gets, she gets absolutely shot in the forehead and is dead. Uh, then he ends up, he goes to this big fancy thing where they have all these prostitutes. Yeah, this is supposed to be their academy or something. Oh, like is that, that? Yeah, I don't this know. Is, basically, this is like, this is where you get selected. Yeah, they're like introducing him to all these expensive power brokers and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. Uh, and he breaks in and just starts murdering mm -hmm. everybody. Yes. <laughs> My favorite thing is he bursts into that big main room and just kneecaps like eight old guys in a row. <laughs> he just shoots like all of these guys in the knee over and over and over again. <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> I have a wife and daughter. For pity sake, duck. It's incredible. Um, but then he finally he gets he kills all the guys and then all the prostitutes are kind of hiding in the corner and then he 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 um. He like grabs the woman who like yeah, runs the operation yeah, the, here the specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now I have to cut all this out. This is gonna come back to us screaming at each other. No one is gonna be any the wiser. What the fuck just happened? Well, so, I'm uh, definitely <laughs> glad that you and I could have a rational conversation about that, Brian. And yes. I respect your policies and principles on it. Yeah, me too. Uh, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so this lady tells her that <laughs> this lady tells her that uh, some guy in Amsterdam has her mm. uh I, I can't remember who it is but some guy in Am she got sold to some guy in amsterdam basically so now he got he has to go to amsterdam a gentleman of ours he likes her he bought her she's with him now who is he where are they jacob andres amsterdam uh then we cut and we see eric roberts hanging out with michael madsen 
And when I say hanging out with Michael Madsen, it That's has never been no. more clear that these two actors were not remotely in the same. No. <laughs> so bad. Eric Roberts is at his desk in his office talking off camera. And Michael Madsen, I kid you not, is standing in front of a blank white wall that literally could be anywhere. Mm. They probably filmed it in the bathroom of the bar he filmed the other scenes in. <laughs> it's just a blank white wall. Oh, God. It's yeah. so good. And they're just chatting with each other about whatever their their big criminal conspiracy because they're working together mm. blah 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 who cares doesn't matter what about this uh, Bradley find him then we, we cut back to the bar Michael Madsen goes back to the bar and is chatting with Daryl Hannah for a bit and she has her backstory about how she got sold into prostitution and hooked on drugs that none of that will matter mm. her character will die in a few minutes for no it's... reason <laughs> we're not quite there yet but we're it's just like what okay great he met the executive he told me I could be a model so next thing you know I'm swinging around the pole the reason this scene is in the movie is that they're talking about the executive and that's mm. who got her into the into this whole deal and uh, it's this big scary person the executive who I think is, is Eric Roberts Eric Roberts yeah. we will find out eventually yes I'm lucky to be alive I know who the executive is alright well that's a good story. Then uh, we get to uh, Eric Ra or not, uh, Gary Daniels goes out to this barn in the countryside to like make a fake ID. He needs to do that at a barn in the countryside for some yeah. reason. <laughs> but he's like being tracked yeah. constantly. So these guys roll up and they 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 kind of like and we get this big fight scene in this barn again. Pretty good. Y like, yeah. There's this the one dude at the end who's just like. He's an extra henchman who took a couple of extra like protein bars and yeah, stuff. That was it's it's so over the top. It's so funny because what they're going for is he's like the big hulking muscle that like is like the immovable object. But this guy is not big enough or yeah. intimidating enough. He's just a dude. It's okay for the record. It's not like the Netherlands is like that far away. There, what's the average height of men in the Netherlands? In like six five or something like that. Just fucking fly one, fly one of them over to the UK and shoot with one of them. Not this guy who's like like a five foot eight dude from I, like Eastern Europe. I agree. I agree. The point is, yeah, I don't know about the average heights of people in the Netherlands. Let's see. What, what was but this? I agree with your broader point. What was this, 2014 when they were shooting this? Because it's 2015 <laughs> film. You could have got Tyson Fury. I think he was he was out on suspension at that point because of the PDs. Sure. Sure. And the, other, and the cocaine habit. <laughs> sure. Point being, this guy is not nearly as intimidating as the role would call for him to be. Uh, because, again, he's supposed to be the kind of guy. Because the fight starts, he, he, like, kicks him in the head, and he just, like, shakes yeah. it off. He, like, doesn't care. And, again, this if this were a different movie, this would be played by what's his, uh, uh, the, uh, Lou Ferrigno or something. Yeah. You know, that's who this role would be. But this guy is clearly not that. Um, but overall, this fight's pretty good because there's some moments where he's like throwing people through shelves and mm. shit that all feels like. Good and punchy yeah. and like good stunts. And, and this stuff has like that. to be people who were the, uh, the, the, the directors, like, he, I want to say martial arts school, but like. His people stunt, he runs with, stunt crew yeah. that he runs with, and stuff like that. Yeah. Because all of them know how to take a hit and make it yeah. look good. Yeah, yeah, that, and that's what this movie ex excels the most at is that the choreography is pretty good, and I think it's because the director, similar to like John Wick or whatever, mm -hmm. comes from the world of like martial arts and stuff like that. And him and all of his friends know how to do choreography and martial arts, and it all the fights all look good. And yeah, it's people like going through walls and slamming through shelves and shit, and it, it looks good. Um, and I do love there's a little gag where with the big muscle guy is his partner who just gets hit in the head over and over again in the course of that fight. <laughs> Fucking Gary Daniels at the start of it kicks a bucket into his face yes. and knocks him out. <laughs> it's incredible. I love it. Then we cut back to the bar. Uh, this is the scene where Michael Madsen kills Daryl Hannah. But this is... It's we so cut the top. to the bar and the fucking outfit they have Michael Mass <laughs> is in like this red like floral kind of it's undershirt. a red crocodile skin yeah. leather oh, jacket God. with metal stud spikes on the shoulders I was like what the fuck 
he, he, he's this. probably like the basis of a band of his of his band, oh and he was God. getting ready for a gig, and he's like, "All right, you guys got me for uh, like five more minutes. Oh. You want you want to like change into your out your your wardrobe for this? No." <laughs> You got me for five more minutes, right? I would die if that's if I saw Michael Madsen in real life and that's how he dressed. I would I would lose my shit laughing. It's great. It's so good. Um, but he so he's talking to Daryl Hannah, and I guess the idea here is he's just tying up loose ends or something mm-hmm. because they're having a conversation. At the end of it, the, it's a great line. I will say for the for the uh, the actors because like it doesn't feel like as phoned in with a lot of no, these performances, no, no, which no. is shocking. Normally yeah. it does. I think like the director kind of gave the these actors free range to just kind of play this how you want to. Potentially, yeah. Because like whenever he's like, you know my favorite, whenever he kills Daryl Hannah, he's like, you know my favorite thing about you? Nothing. Yeah, (laughs) that's that's a great line. And it's the most Michael Madsen line he could have said. (laughs) You know, you know what I really like about you? What? Absolutely nothing. It's a great line. You know what I like about you? Absolutely nothing. And then he shoots her. I was like, that's fantastic. That's great. It's so good. (laughs) <laughs> uh, but so yeah he murders Dale Hannah I don't know who cares it, like again these characters are barely in the movie they're just there to give these these names that we know something to do for a few minutes in the film if he gave his accuracy a score what would it be wait what if he gave his accuracy a score for killing her Michael what, Madsen yeah what would oh. it be oh no what's the joke I'm missing ten but what does that have to do with... Brian is an uncultured swine who doesn't know 1980s movies. Tin, Daryl Hannah, the movie that made her famous. Everybody, that was terrible. Everybody that was terrible. Everybody applaud for Kyle in the comments below. I need pity. Everybody uh, say, Kyle, really good joke about 10. I need, I need affirmation. My life's not going so well right now. Kyle, that's the funniest reference to the movie 10 I've ever heard in my life, which is probably true. <laughs> So then he goes to Amsterdam, and I was dying because Amsterdam, does all of Amsterdam look the same, or do people only film in, like, the same quarter mile, like, stretch? I swear to God, I see that same canal and Mm. bridge in Amsterdam in every, I was, we're watching Ted Lasso right now, and they went to Amsterdam for an episode, and I swear to God, it was the same bridge. It's (laughs) basically Venice with buildings made of wood, and everything's moss covered. And bikes. And And bikes, yeah. bikes everywhere. But it felt, I was like, man, it feels like the exact same place I always see in Amsterdam. Um, But anyways, uh, I'm sure a lot of the city looks vaguely similar. I know the canals are out. If you want it to look like Amsterdam, you go to the fucking canal, and you're like, look, it's Amsterdam. I get it. It's just, it's so funny. I was like, is that the exact same But how do we know we're in Rome? Show the the Coliseum. Coliseum. Yeah, exactly. So then he gets to Amsterdam, and this is where he meets Jeff Fahey's character. And Mm. we cut into Jeff Fahey, who is reading a book. And I love we get these terrible, not shot for slow mo, slow mo shots of him like turning pages and stuff like that. And Kyle, this scene is another one of those scenes that was clearly shot in two chunks because there is just a, an abrupt cut halfway through and the production changes entirely, entirely. between yeah. them. It's insane. Yeah. There's a different camera. There's different set. It's completely different. Like they had a whole different crew shooting one of these scenes. <laughs> then they did the or the first half of the scene. Then they did the second half of the scene. Cause he's standing in front of all these windows with these blinds down. Gary Daniels is, and he's lit terribly in this scene. Like he, you can yeah, barely see his really face, and, but it's not enough to where it's like a silhouette, like a creepy. He's just literally just poorly lit. Um, and then Jeff Fahey is sitting there and they have this whole conversation and then come, Jeff Fahey, he goes, why don't you have a seat? And then it cuts and now all the blinds are open. It's nighttime and the cameras are different. It's all different, Kyle. It's an entirely different production. <laughs> Maybe you should have a seat. But it's the same scene. It's so weird. It's so weird. I also have no idea what's happening in this conversation. What do they even talk about? Uh, that uh, Jeff A's character was also like an agent with the uh, assassination. Is that what it was? People. And this is just uh, Eric Roberts' character tying up loose ends by framing him. Oh. They mix truth with deception. Black is white, and white is black, and gray laps and overflows. Okay, because the only thing I remember is that at the end of this, we find out that Fahey's wife was murdered and that his daughter is being held captive to force him to work to help uh, Eric Roberts, basically. 
And and then so instead he decides he's gonna help Gary Daniels. They killed your wife. They're holding your daughter. And Gary Daniels is gonna pretend he murdered Jeff Fahey, I think, mm -hmm. is the idea or something like that. It's very tough. Uh, then we get another ter uh, another uh, good, good, better, bad, bad hallmark, the terrible newscast. <laughs> there's <laughs> yeah. very brief, but there's a shot of this woman sitting there again, looking like she's being held at gunpoint reading the news. But close diamond merchant Jacob Andreas was found dead this evening on the floor of his hotel suite. It's just every time it gets me so much. Ye they all look the same. Ye old new news today. <laughs> it opens up with a news open. And it news, says, news, news, today. news. <laughs> Okay, so it says news, news, uh, news, news today, and I go, oh, that's hilarious. They they got like a, a generic like news open, and they didn't customize. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. they got it from like an After Effects place, and they didn't know how to customize it or didn't customize it. So it just says news, news, and I'm like, oh, it's, but they, they just didn't change it because they didn't know how. But then it cuts to Lenny G, and he goes, I'm Lenny G with news, news today. <laughs> Lenny G reporting for news, news today. Oh my god, every one of them looks the exact same and I love it so Ugh. much. Um, we also find out, then we cut to Eric Roberts' office, uh, I believe, or no, it might be the police chief's office, but we find out the police chief is on the take. Yeah. Which we've seen the police chief several times at this point, but we find out he's working with Eric Roberts. He's on the take. And then Eric Roberts pulls out, <laughs> he hits him over the head with yeah. a bottle. Go straight to hell. <laughs> Yeah, and then pulls out that Desert Eagle. The Desert Eagle! This is it the looks so. plastic <laughs> Desert Eagle I've ever seen, Kyle. What do you think? What do you think? Because, like, Eric Roberts has been in movies where he's right? used actual, like, yeah. like, blanks and stuff. Yeah. What do you think his response was whenever he was like, oh, fuck. Are you fucking I kidding guess. me? <laughs> yeah, it just, it's so bad. It's amazing. He pulls this thing out and then he shoots him. And, it, like I said, there it clearly is like an airsoft or something because mm -hmm. it does actually be the slide moves when he shoots. I don't think it's CG. It looks like it's the slide actually moving, but it's, it's probably just got CO2 or whatever. They You know, it's Takes a the slide. very powerful handgun, Brian. <laughs> yeah, a yeah. deagle? Yeah, no, the fucking end. <laughs> what? We'll get to oh, it. Oh, God, yeah, you mean when he fucking, his head gets turned into a goddamn canoe? Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's incredible. It's a fucking Ooh. incredible. Uh, so anyways, he uh, he shoots and kills the police chief, and there's no side, there's no issue nope, with nothing. that, apparently. Nothing nope. follows up on that. Mm -hmm. You just murder the police chief, and it's fine. Oh, God. Uh, so then Gary Daniels gets a call from somebody, I think Eric Roberts, whoever, somebody, he gets a call, on, and they're like, look at your phone. And they, and they show him a video. Yes. Where's my proof? Do you have access to the, the net? net? Yeah. It's like a hostage video. And this scene makes no sense. He goes, they're like, look, we have them. And he goes, oh, how do I know this is current? It means nothing. This could have been recorded any time. And... All that happens is is, is the is X uh, R, what's his name R uh, R, R the director of the, the film, director yeah, X, he yeah. like grabs one of the girl by the head and is like yeah look I'm menacing it means nothing this could have been recorded any time are you reassured now Bradley yeah he shakes her and and then Gary Daniels is like oh well then it must be now yeah it has to it has to what be. that could it what that could be pre -rec he could why would that what <laughs> it doesn't make any sense i don't know like there's no reason that him grabbing her would be the thing that convinced you that was a current video it just doesn't make any fucking sense uh, whatever do we have a deal yeah 
Yeah, we've got a deal. So then they go to this airstrip, which is like where all this is going down at the end of this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I don't even remember exactly what's going on, but I love when they get to the airstrips. These people in a fucking Jeep drive through and crash through the gate, and it's a CG gate. It's, <laughs> it's incredible. And then out of nowhere, again, none of the connective tissue was shot here. No. All of a sudden... This, everything from here on is absolute chaos. Chaos. All of a sudden, we see that, that Jeep drive through the gate, and then we cut inside, and Eric Roberts and Gary Daniels are just together. Yeah. Like, talking but, to each other. Yeah. Like, what? As you can see, I kept my side of the bargain. Where are the girls? How did we... Okay, so they're, they're there now. Um, and <laughs> there's this great moment where he has the disc. Gary Daniels has the, the or it's like a little yeah, flash drive or whatever. Yeah. And I love it. He has this line where he's talking to Eric Roberts, and they're like, they're like let's make a trade, basically. I have the, the the people you want. You have the disc I want. We'll just make a trade. And Gary Daniels says to him, and he holds up the, the, the little disc thing, and he goes, all you got to do is walk over here and take this out of my hand. All you got to do is walk over here and take this out of my hand. And at first, I thought what was going to happen was that that was going to be like a weird meta joke based on the fact that they're not filming together. They are filming together. But I thought when he's like, all you got to do is take this that out of be, my hand. That it's would like be pretty good. he literally can't <laughs> because they're not filming at the same time. But you no, know, they are. Uh, and he walks over there and then they get into like this equilibrium gun kata fight. Yes, yeah, it's, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> Where they're like trying to and also they're, they're both deaf at this point. Like there's yes. no way there's no hearing damage. <laughs> shooting giant pistols right next to each other's heads. And then literally, again, the, the, with no connective tissue, they're shooting at each other and then they like break apart for a second. Gary Daniels or- Yeah, there's like two guys, two yeah. henchmen that are coming down the stairs and Gary Daniels kills them. And then Eric Roberts is just gone. Eric Roberts is gone and then we just cut and now Gary Daniels is running through a junkyard. What? Where? I what? thought we were on an airfield. I know. I don't know, Kyle. I have no idea what's going on. But he's just in a junkyard now. And then I can't, like, you have the moving cranes and stuff, and this looks like it's also like some bad CG, because there's, like, clearly compositing that's going on. There's some, but they're also just dropping cars and shit, yeah. like, which looks pretty cool. But he, he, there's some great stuff here where he's, like, drop kicking people through windshields. Yeah, and yeah. Shit. Some of those are, yeah, pretty great. <laughs> awesome um and like i said this might be the best choreo we've seen in a gary daniels film that's like or at least the best executed best shot it looks really good except maybe some of the earliest ones like mm. kickboxer or whatever um or whatever was that was he a uh, kickboxer is capital punishment no. i don't know the one where he's like doing splits all the time well he that's every film from the 90s fair enough whatever um but anyways it's a pretty good choreo in this I love there's this one scene, though, that's like moment that's really dumb where he's in the middle of all these stacked up cars mm -hmm. and the camera does like a 360 spin and there's all these people surrounding him with guns and none of them no, shoot him. Not. They all run at him with guns. Yeah, it's a melee weapon. <laughs> Melee weapon, Brian. <laughs> oh, and he just murders them all. Meanwhile, the cranes are like dropping cars on him and stuff. Uh, then he murders all of them, and then we get back into the the where like the the, the yeah. He's like now in like a hangar. A hangar, like yeah. Which it seemed like where we started the scene. There with was Eric Roberts. There, there was one scene where he somebody like tries to run into him, and he like rolls over a hood behind yes, him. Yeah. And this the the choreography in this scene alone is worth the price of admission. Yeah, it's really good. It's really great. Yeah, like yeah, like it's like moving the camera's those two like cars. Yeah, so like the camera's like moving up to Gary Daniels, and two people come into frame. Yeah, and they and start like getting, back. Oh, and it's yeah, so good. it's great. It's great. It really is great. Um, and then uh, but then we get into this <laughs> into this hangar, and Kyle, a hundred percent. Again, this it's, was filmed. This is another one that was filmed in two different pieces. And they had the, the Eric Roberts scene mm -hmm. was filmed at one point with a better camera, and it actually has a helicopter sitting in the scene with them. Yeah. And then they filmed a second one uh, that is him fighting all the henchmen, uh, <laughs> which has a CG helicopter yes. sitting behind them. 
speak, speaking of which, we forgot this part. So they have the girls with them. They oh, are bringing, yeah. they brought them on a like Chinook helicopter, like an yeah. army helicopter. Yeah. And the CG of that propeller spinning is just hilarious. Yes. It's incredible. It's fucking incredible. But then he's fighting, and somebody starts up the helicopter in for, the for reasons for no reason whatsoever. Somebody yeah. starts the helicopter. Uh, so we get more CG propellers spinning. Yes. But we get some great moments, which is that he fucking shotgun blasts a guy in a chest. He like yes, he so he like kicks him up and then shotgun blasts him for it's like right out of like a '90s video game. It's, it's hilarious. Into the, he does it twice, once into the tail rotor mm. and then once into the like main rotor or whatever and just chops these guys up. It's incredible. That shit was so good. Uh, but then he gets in, then the director comes in, and this is where he gets into the big fight with the director. Yeah. And they have like their big thing, and the director does like the fucking Jean Claude Van Damme thing where he only kicks for like the first 10 minutes or whatever. Uh, but their fight's pretty good. Again, the director is a, is a, he can clearly fight and clearly uh, knows martial arts and stuff like that. <laughs> At the end of their fight, Gary Daniels gets behind some barrels. I, I have no clue. Like they, they, so they get into their close combat splat, spat, and then they like push off from each other. Yeah, and they each grab a rifle. Yeah, uh, and Gary Daniels somehow just shoots him, and he's got a piece of propeller sticking through his chest. What happened? I have no what, clue. He shoots him with a rifle, and then all of a sudden, there's a hunk of metal sticking out of his chest. And I was like, what does that have also, to do with the rifle? We need to find out what rifles they have, because it, it, they're fake, obviously. It has zero recoil when it's yeah, shooting. Yeah. Like, like it, it's like the, if the stock was here and not pushed <laughs> up against your shoulder, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. Well, and also it's like, is it is it a rail gun? Is it shooting hunks of metal? What is? What, what, I, what I think it was, was he couldn't get a shot. And this is just because I didn't know how to shoot this, I guess. Oh, so and he shot. He shoots. Shot, the he shoots yeah, he shoots the the rotor, the rotor. Yeah, and it like breaks and impales him. Mm -hmm. We don't see that at all. Like that be that would be cool if they knew how to do it. Yes, that's not at all what we see. What we see is him shoot him with a rifle, and then it cuts to a guy with a hunk of metal in his chest. And I was like, how do these two things relate? <laughs> I do not understand at all. Oh my god! Uh, but then all of a sudden, Eric Roberts is back, and now we have switched to the better camera again, in, in yeah. entirely different. And production. also, Gary Daniels is—he's just more bloodied now, even though it didn't look like he took any damage. Yes, from yeah, fighting. and it's a real helicopter behind them mm -hmm. again, completely different color. The CG one is all black. This one is like white in, on most of it, or whatever. <laughs> So they have their big standoff or whatever, and then they just Eric. He's like, "Hey, just come take the thing." Yeah, come come take the thing. Come take just the thing. And Eric Roberts walks up to him with this fucking giant fuck off deagle, <laughs> and this in the in the silliest, most incredible <laughs> ending ever. Gary Daniels just takes. He, his yeah, gun. he just just does the quick turnaround on the it. little Steven Seagal pa -pa. Oh, and <laughs> blows so his head off. Blows half his head off. It could have gone so far. Fuck you. It's so good. He blows the entire top half of his head off. I all I could think of over and over again was like I said, and I referenced it earlier, but was um uh in uh, uh Tombstone uh um Doc Holliday's character at one Play point. Blood, remember? Oh, at, at one point he goes, "I'll turn your uh, turn your head into a canoe or something." Oh, yeah. Or no, I think I actually I think uh, I think I don't think it's Doc Holliday that says that. I think it's actually um, Wyatt Earp that says that. Mm. Whatever. You die first, get it? Your friends might get me in a rush, but not before I make your head into a canoe. You understand me? Uh, and then it just cuts, and now Mickey Rourke is still alive. I yeah. thought he got killed in that exchange. I, I guess not. No. But now he wants his revenge. He wants revenge. The executive's dead, huh? Finally caught up with his taste in suits. 
and he has a great line. It closes on a great line. He's like, I'm not going to be okay with anything until I'm standing over that motherfucker pissing down his eye socket. <laughs> I'm not going to be okay with anything until I'm standing over that motherfucker pissing down his eye socket. And then the movie ends. Such a Mickey Rourke line. <laughs> good holy shit uh kyle's movie is good it's bad. good bad. It's, it's great bad. absolutely good it's bad. like everything perfect about bad <laughs> martial arts movies. there's a little bit in the middle that's a little boring mm. it, uh, in between the action scenes right in the middle it gets a it drug a little bit for me but after that it, it's great uh it's, it's not like it's super long it's only like an hour and a half but yep. it's um the thing i am excited about i don't know if they actually made a sequel to this or not they obviously do sequel bait yeah. at the end but this director, he's done a lot. He's done a lot of movies. He's done quite a few other movies, and some of them I am very excited to see. <laughs> <laughs> One of them starring fucking Lou Ferrigno. I oh my wait. god! Yes, I can't wait to talk about that movie. It looks incredible. <laughs> This woman is so miserable, she had just been subjected to inhuman treatment, and now she was picked up by a man and slammed around. Then the man hit her face again with a heavy punch. The <laughs> man had no mercy for her. Oh, God. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. As always, you can do us a giant favor by heading over to patreon.com slash goodbetterbadbad. Support us there for a few bucks a month, get access to stuff, including bonus content. You can also buy merch. Just head over to tpublic.com. Search for quantum physics or good, bad, or bad, bad, and get yourself some GB or BB merch. I have a podcast called This Film is that we're talking about movies that are based on books. When this episode is out, the most recent episode will have been uh, The Black Cauldron, I believe. The Disney Black Cauldron movie from the like 80s, 70s, 80s. You not seen The Black Cauldron? I don't know why my brain is just going to The Black Crystal for some reason. No, not The Black Crystal, <laughs> but it's also. Apparently equally creepy and weird. Uh, you can also check us out occasionally on Twitch. Just uh, all this information. Just look in the description. Yep, yep. Doobly, whatever. If it's you want to follow anything that we're doing, yeah, it is just all look down in the there. description, uh, Discord, all that good stuff. You can be involved with all of that uh, on Patreon. We're actually right after this. We'll be recording a. Um, Got a QA. and a Q and a a and a mailbag episode. The mailbag episodes we are putting up on a second channel so as not to fuck with our algorithm too much. Uh, I probably will share that at some point. Uh, mm. We just haven't yet. Um, but the mailbag episodes we're going to be, and maybe some other stuff we're going to be keeping on a secondary channel because that stuff doesn't get as much engagement and it can fuck with your doesn't matter i don't even i don't even understand it i just know it can fuck with your algorithm so we're not putting it on the main channel anymore <laughs> uh but yeah uh and then on patreon if you support us for a couple bucks a month you can access and listen to the the, the ama where we uh, every i don't know once a month every couple months we do an ama um where people ask us whatever and we'll just sit there and talk for an hour and kind of answer all those questions uh and that goes out for everybody on patreon so that's it until next time keep watching movies especially Skin traffic. Skin traffic with a K. Skin traffic. <laughs> traffic. Wait a second. That's not a, That's not how that goes.